Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd, and I feel really bad about bashing the Orville, especially after last week's uh, epic episode, which was one of the best episodes of all of science fiction in my opinion, so I really praised it a lot, and maybe partly because of that, because that was so good, and so this one was just average, so it seems to be like a huge uh, downfall, but uh, my biggest problem with this episode is the same problem which I was always complaining in the Orville, one of the few things which bug me about the Orville is the unoriginality, that a lot of times I feel like they're just copying the same exact ideas from different Star Trek shows and mixing them together in a kind of a new way, hoping no one would notice, so I'm kind of bugged by that. And as I said before, I'm okay with remaking the same ideas under certain conditions, if you want to make a parody, you have to recreate the original settings in order to poke fun at it directly, but it's not what it's doing. Yes, there were some comedic moments, but it doesn't justify just ripping off the entire story when it wasn't played for laughs for most of the time, so I can dismiss it as being a parody. And by the way, I'm not talking at all about the legality of any of this, this is not what it's about. I shared my opinions on that before, I'm only talking from my perspective, my enjoyment of the show, how much it affects my enjoyment. And I say that uh, I'm fine with uh, seeing a remake of an old idea if it's done better than it was done before. Then I would be more okay with it. In general, I prefer to see brand new ideas, which I never saw before. That would be the best case scenario. Or maybe ideas that were only done in books and uh, we never saw in live action, which the Orville did do in season one. It did do a few ideas which we never saw before. That's why I praised it so highly. I said, wow, this feels totally original. It's not just a ripoff of Star Trek. That's why I praised season one, when it had all those ideas, even though later I found out, okay, some of them were kind of taken from books or from older movies, so not completely original, but at least it was an improvement. It was a remake of the same ideas done much better and some of them done for the first time on TV, so that's great. That's what remakes should be doing, and that's one of my complaints about Hollywood movies as well, because whenever they did a remake, they always remade a movie which was good already, and they did it because they were afraid of losing money, so it's much safer to use a title which was famous already, so they take some kind of a famous movie which was good already, and they make a new version of that, a remake of that. So for example, Total Recall, Robocop, movies like that which were good already, and so when they try to make a remake of it, it's not, uh, it's sometimes worse than the original, and so it's pointless, it feels unoriginal, and it feels worse than the original, which pisses me off personally. Now if I never saw the original, maybe I would be fine with that, maybe I would say, okay, it's for a new audience who might have missed the original, so fine, but as someone who saw the original, it always pisses me off to see a remake which is not as good as the original. So I think Hollywood should be remaking good ideas which were not executed properly before, meaning if some movie had a very good science fiction idea but the special effects simply weren't good enough or there were a lot of flaws which can be improved, so that's what they should be doing. I would be fine with a remake which takes a very good idea and does it much better for a modern audience, that's great. That would be worth it. Of course, they don't want to take risks, and so they only remake movies which were good already, which is pointless, and just piss me off when they make it worse than uh, it was done before, despite the better special effects sometimes. And so that's how it feels like sometimes in the Orville. And this episode is another example, because they simply took ideas from several different episodes of TNG and Deep Space Nine, and they just kind of mixed them all together, and they presented it as if it's something new. And so it kind of pissed me off. So... That's why I don't like this episode. Now, if I never saw the other Star Trek shows, if I was seeing this for the very first time and I wouldn't notice all of this, then maybe I would enjoy it much more and it wouldn't piss me off, so part of me wishes I could erase my memory. And I'm sorry, I have no other word for this episode except for a ripoff, because it's not a parody, it wasn't done to poke fun at the original stories, and it wasn't done better. Uh, they did add a few twists to it, which did kind of improve it a little bit, so that's why toward the end I kind of forgave some of the stuff they pulled here. But still, I have to admit the truth, if I'm honest, this episode felt like a ripoff of several different episodes. Uh, mostly it was similar to the TNG episode The Wounded in season 4, which was about uh, Captain Maxwell, who is violating orders to fight the Cardassians, and the Cardassians have a peace treaty with the Federation, and Maxwell is against that because the Cardassians once killed his wife and kids, and so he wants revenge against them, he's against the peace. So it was very, very similar to some of the ideas in this episode. A few of the scenes, some of the dialogue was identical, 
And also there was an episode of Deep Space Nine called Pass Prologue, which was about a Bajoran terrorist who was a prisoner of the Cardassians and he's the former best friend of Kira. And then uh, it turns out he wants uh, the Federation out. And so he kind of tests uh, Kira's loyalty, who she's loyal to. Is she loyal to the Bajorans or to the Federation? And then he gets a bomb. They fight in the shuttle in the end, so exactly the same stuff. So I'm sorry, but this feels like a ripoff, as if they mixed a few ideas from different Star Trek episodes, they mixed them together and put it here. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I cannot defend this. This is this is just a ripoff. This is not a parody. This was not done to poke fun at the original. And even when I'm not talking legality, I think just as a viewer who watched the original shows, I just feel I saw that already. And was it done better here? I don't think so, because uh, they kind of mixed a lot of ideas together in a rushed way, and I think uh, The Wounded was a much better episode of TNG than uh, this episode was, and some parts in here were kind of rushed. The only thing I liked is that they added a few twists uh, toward the end, and so that did add a little bit of uh, unexpected feeling, and so that kind of saved it a little bit. And anyone who watched the original Star Trek shows and he recognizes these elements would probably feel the same way. Some of you who might be listening, if you didn't see all these episodes I'm talking about, maybe you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, and for this reason I will probably make a compilation, so I'll put that on my second channel to demonstrate what I'm talking about, that they're kind of ripping off uh, the same exact ideas, and sometimes the same dialogue even, so... So this is just my honest opinion, and you know that I'm a big fan of the Orville, you know how much I praised it before, if you watched any of my previous videos, so I'm not happy at all about this. I just hate to admit that this episode was just... Uh, I wouldn't say it's a bad episode. Like, if you never saw the other Star Trek shows, you might enjoy it. You might think this was a great episode, but for me, who's someone who watched the, the previous shows, it just feels like someone is copying and stealing the ideas. I'm sorry, that's my opinion. So let me now go over the episode and I'll mention all the points uh, I want to talk about. So the Krill are in negotiations with the Union about uh, establishing a peace treaty. So that's sort of like uh, Starfleet and the Cardassians. And uh, the Krill did save the Union uh, in the previous episode, so I do think it makes sense. However, it feels a little bit rushed. And uh, by the way, by the end of the episode, they do in fact sign the final peace treaty. So that does feel a little bit rushed, as if they're kind of moving too quickly. So just a few episodes, we, we all thought the Krill are the bad guys of the show, and suddenly they're the best friends. It kind of feels too rushed, uh, too quickly. And when the Orville first meets a Krill ship and someone asks uh, the captain should we raise shields and then he kind of thinks and says no, let's show them uh, a sign of uh, trust. That sounded exactly, even the intonation sounded exactly like uh, Captain Picard in TNG. Then some Krill shuttle is escaping from the Krill and uh, the Krill are shooting at it and then the Orville takes that shuttle inside. That reminded me of a TNG episode in which a Romulan admiral escaped from his own people and took asylum on the Enterprise, so I kind of uh, immediately thought, oh, so they're doing something similar, but they actually didn't do that. They only took that element of the Krill shuttle escaping, so I wouldn't call that part any kind of ripoff. And then it turns out there are two humans on the shuttle, someone who is a former uh, officer of the Union and his daughter, and the Krill demand that they give him back because uh, he's a terrorist who destroyed a few of their ships. And then uh, later when they meet for the negotiations, they say there will be no peace unless you return us uh, this human. That whole thing kind of reminded me of the TNG episode Suddenly Human, which was about a boy who was raised by aliens who used to be an enemy of the Federation. And the captain of those aliens uh, threatened there would be war unless they returned the kid to him. And so that was kind of the moral dilemma of that episode. Should you return the kid to that foster father of him who basically kidnapped him as a baby or not? And so we have a similar kind of dilemma here in the Orville when the Krill demand to get back this uh, terrorist. And also his daughter apparently suffers from some kind of uh, PTSD. She doesn't talk with people. And they say that uh, she went nuts in sickbay. And uh, maybe this is a deleted scene because it sounds very similar to that scene in uh, TNG in Suddenly Human in which the kid uh, went nuts in sickbay. So I kind of suspect maybe there was a deleted scene and they removed it because it was too similar. Maybe because they talked, they described what happened and it sounds exactly the same as what happened in TNG. And her character also reminds me of a few characters that appeared in Star Trek. For example, uh, O'Brien's daughter in one episode, she got uh, trapped on a planet. She fell uh, through a time machine and then she lived on a planet by herself for a few years. And when she came back, she was also like this, kind of not talking with anyone, unable to speak with people. And also there was an episode about the genetically engineered uh, mutants who all were kind of weird. And one of them was uh, a woman who also was like this, who was kind of 
kind of unable to talk with other people, kind of autistic. And so we have the similar kind of uh, a character here of this woman who, because she was, uh, they say she was in a cruel prison, that's why she's like this. Uh, later on, they do add a twist to it. So that was good because at least it uh, shook things up a little bit. Uh, there was one funny scene which I really liked uh, when the Krill were boarding the Orville and Ed Mercer uh, wanted to stall them. So he asked uh, Tala uh, to keep them occupied for a while and then she runs them through a series of uh, tests. Like uh, she asks a urine sample from them and stuff like that. I think uh, there was a Deep Space Nine episode also with a similar idea when Cisco asked Odo to delay some ship by forcing them to go through every single test imaginable, which usually I guess they kind of slack off. They don't really do all the tests all the time and so I think there was one episode in which Cisco asked Odo to do that and also in TNG there was an episode in which uh, Beverly Crusher wanted to search uh, a Klingon shuttle and so she had to invent all kinds of regulations uh, which did exist like it wasn't a total lie but they kind of exploited those regulations to their fullest extent to do a thorough search of that shuttle so it all reminded me of that and because this was funny here, this I do view as a parody. This scene is an example of something which is okay in my opinion because they make it funnier than it was originally and in a way better. And so that's why I'm fine with this specific scene. So anyway, meanwhile, they try to get answers from this guy who, by the way, looks exactly like Colson from the Avengers and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And he is very obviously inspired by a Captain Maxwell in TNG basically the same character and there was even a few lines by him which sounded the same like uh, when they were actually pondering to give him back to the krill uh, by the orders of the admirals uh, which also is something that happened in tng's uh, the wounded an admiral contact picard and told him he has to prevent a war with the cardassians at all cost uh, partly because of what happened in uh, wolf 359 because their fleet is too weak and so they cannot risk another war with the cardassians at this time and so the admiral told picard you have to maintain the peace with the Cardassians no matter what. And so we have a similar scene here with the Admiral telling Mercer that he has to sign the peace with the Krill no matter what. Because they need them against the Kalons. And then Gordon tells that uh, Colson looking guy that they're actually considering giving him to the Krill. And then he kind of looks out the window and he says political snakes. And it really reminds me of Maxwell who was ranting about uh, the Federation bureaucrats. So it's not an exact copy of the dialogue, but very, very similar, obviously inspired by it. And also similar to that Bajoran terrorist in Deep Space Nine's episode Past Prolong, who was uh, also the best friend of Kira from the past, and he spent a few years in a Cardassian prison, and he was tortured, and so he hates the Cardassians, and he also hates uh, the Federation because he only thinks about the Bajorans, like uh, he's been a racist against everybody except the Bajorans, and he tries to convince Kira to help him, and then she pretends to help him, to figure out what he's planning and he has uh, that bomb in that container and so we have the exact same thing in this episode and he wants to blow up a krill ship to prevent the peace just like maxwell tried to prevent the peace with the cardassians even though i think maxwell had a much bigger reason that's one of the reasons i think that png episode was much better because here it's basically only about this guy who's uh, acting irrationally actually you know what it's not completely irrational because as i said just a while ago the krill were the worst enemy of the union and so I think this guy was perfectly justified in fighting against them, especially since uh, he didn't even know about the ceasefire. I mean, it just happened in the previous episode, so maybe there was no way for him to know that uh, there are now peace negotiations with them. How could he know that? And so he was justified in my opinion. And by the way, the whole moral dilemma, I think the best solution would have been not to extradite him to the Krill, who would have tortured him, but maybe put him in jail in the Union to punish him for what he did, uh, maybe just to kind of uh, appease the Krill a little bit, and then maybe later release him after the signing of the peace treaty. So just give him kind of a slap on the wrist, symbolically put him in jail so that the Krill would be happy, and then a while later to release him. And so that's how I would have solved this conflict. I wouldn't give him back to the Krill because I think his actions were perfectly justified unless he kills civilians and they don't say that. They say that he attacked Krill ships which I guess were military and so I see no, nothing wrong with that because apparently these two powers have been at war. The Krill were the biggest enemy of the Union, constantly attacking the Union and this guy didn't know about the peace talks and so he continued attacking them and so I don't think there's anything illegitimate about that. And the, the Admiral saying that he doesn't want to extradite him, that is kind of nasty. I mean, that this is a, your officer from your military and you know he'll get tortured and killed and still you want to give him just because you want uh, this deal with the Krill. But if the Krill are this nasty, then should you really make a peace deal with them? How can you really trust them? If they are unable to be flexible, if they are unable to come toward you a little bit, 
on these issues of humanitarian rights and so on. And I said in my previous video, I made a review of an old episode of TOS, and I said one of the things that pissed me off in uh, Star Trek was that the Federation was sometimes kind of too eager to please, too pacifistic, that they were always the ones to appease the aliens and not the other way around. And I think you have to have a little bit of spine, you have to stand your ground a little bit. So I didn't like it when the Orville admirals were actually telling Ed Mercer to be willing to give that guy to the crew. So I didn't like that at all. And that also kind of justifies the actions of that guy. Because after he hears about it, he knows he has nothing to lose. And so he might as well go out fighting against the krill. So it's not a bad story. Again, if it, if it didn't uh, feel like such a ripoff of the other Star Trek shows, I would maybe I would like this episode. And also, as I mentioned, it reminded me of the episode Suddenly Human, which was also about this dilemma of maybe they should give that kid back uh, to that captain to prevent a war with these people or not. And so that was the dilemma in that episode. Uh, also, there was a scene in the mess hall in which Tala plays with a music instrument from her planet and it creates holograms when you play it. That reminds me of something that was in Futurama. And it also was there for no reason, like I expected maybe to see that uh, woman play that uh, device later and uh, it didn't happen, so it seemed to kind of uh, be there for no reason. So that also didn't feel totally original. Another thing that I didn't like is that uh, Gordon was kind of an idiot in that scene in which he was showing Planet of the Apes uh, to that woman. And he kind of expected her to understand the ending, but yet he knows that she was never on Earth, and so how did he know she would even know what the Statue of Liberty is? And this is the kind of thing that kind of bugs me about the show a lot of times, in previous episodes also, they kind of always assume that some aliens who were never on Earth, they would somehow understand all these references. Like for example in the episode about a girl when they were having that trial with the Maklans, they were asking Gordon questions about uh, planet Earth to show why he's an idiot, and yet the Maklans, they would all not know the answers either, and so they wouldn't get uh, any of this. And so this is something that uh, I don't like when they do it in the Orville, that they kind of assume that everybody, including aliens, would understand all these references about Earth. And so that was kind of stupid. It feels like bad writing, honestly. Uh, then we have scenes of uh, Ed Mercer talking with Gordon about that guy, so that was exactly like the scenes in which uh, Picard was talking to O'Brien, because in that episode, The Wounded, O'Brien was the best friend of Maxwell in the past, and so O'Brien was the one defending him, so that was also very similar. And uh, I did like that twist they did with Gordon, because they made it look as if Gordon is actually playing along with that guy, and I was about to say, oh no, so they are now making Gordon into a traitor and he will be irredeemable after this. And so I was almost facepalming, I, I think this would be unforgivable, but then they revealed that, oh, so it's uh, just a, a ploy to expose that guy, to reveal exactly what he did and why, and we the audience don't know that right away, so that's kind of like uh, with Kira and the terrorist, she also pretended to help him in order to expose him, so that's the same idea. And here it's revealed pretty quickly, maybe too quickly, they reveal right away that this has all been uh, the plan all along. And Kelly says something uh, like, it's a big risk doing this. And this uh, feels uh, exactly like the scene in Star Wars A New Hope, in which Tarkin and Vader reveal that they basically allowed the Falcon to escape the Death Star because they planted the tracking device on it to see where the Falcon is going in order to find the Rebel base. So we have a very similar scene here between Kelly and Ed Mercer. This I did find kind of funny because this was kind of a blatant similarity which uh, I found hilarious because this is kind of in reverse. So these are the good guys and they're planning a trap for the bad guys. So this is the same kind of scene but in reverse and so I did kind of like that. And because it's kind of comedic, so I find that almost like a parody of Star Wars, so not really a direct ripoff. And then we see Gordon and that guy on the shuttle, and this is exactly like uh, Kira and the Bajoran terrorist on the shuttle, and he also had an explosive inside that cylinder, and then doesn't want to tell Kira what he's planning, and then uh, there's a fight between them in the end, so exactly the same thing here. And I did like the twist they did with that woman who turned out to be not the daughter of uh, Coulson, but rather some kind of alien who have explosive blood. And it turns out that's what he's been using to blow up the Krill ships. He's actually been taking her blood because she also hates the Krill. And when they reveal it and uh, they seal her in the quarters with the force field, I thought to myself, oh, now she will explode. Uh, that was also done a lot of times in Star Trek. Some kind of alien with uh, super explosive blood blows himself up. Even in Discovery, there was that plot with the Vulcan logic extremist. And yet it didn't happen here. So apparently she didn't kill herself. So at least it was uh, done differently here. 
And so I think all this twist actually made it better because when they revealed that his daughter actually also died, it also explained why he's so angry. It wasn't just his wife who died, but his entire family, just like uh, Captain Maxwell. And what I didn't like is that uh, that guy basically killed himself for no reason in the end and that also neatly solved their moral dilemma. They didn't really have to make a decision of what to do with him in the end. And so I felt like this was a cheap way to get out of that dilemma without really addressing it, without uh, really solving this question of what should be done with him. And so it felt like just a lazy way to finish that story. And instead they just show kind of Gordon uh, escaping and that guy basically blowing himself up. So I guess we can say that Gordon made that decision, but it, it wasn't direct enough. Like I would have wanted to see Gordon directly holding uh, the option what to do. To cause a war with the Krill or option B to let this guy die. And to have him make that choice much more directly and, and then he would choose the greater good but also he would have the guilt of basically having killed his uh, old friend and that would have been dramatic and much more interesting and much more uh, of a morality question and yet they kind of took that choice away from his hands and so i didn't like that it felt like a, a lazy ending and also a cheap way not to having decide uh, if to extradite that guy or not and as i said i think the best solution would have been uh, to do what they did with captain maxwell they didn't turn him over to the Cardassians after what he did because he also blew up a whole bunch of Cardassian ships but the Federation itself basically put him in jail in the Federation and that way the Cardassians were happy enough and yet Starfleet didn't betray this guy who used to be a war hero in the Federation so they didn't just give him to the Cardassians where he would be tortured instead uh, they put him in jail in the Federation itself so this way everybody are happy and that was uh, the perfect uh, ending in that episode of TNG and so that's why I think it was done better in TNG also TNG had better acting and that guy who played Maxwell who played in a lot of movies by the way had very emotional scenes there and so it was much more believable in TNG much more dramatic and also all the scenes with O'Brien being conflicted it was a lot better in TNG and here it's just played for laughs some of the time it was just kind of cheap that's why I didn't like it that's why I say this uh, kind of remake is worse than the original and that is a bad way to do a remake and also in the very end they signed a peace charity with the Krill and it just feels too rushed like uh, maybe it would have been more interesting to actually have uh, all this uh, being sabotaged maybe the Krill wouldn't sign the peace charity in the end because of all of this maybe and so that would uh, leave some room later in the series to play around with that and to make it more gradual to form a trust with the krill gradually and not just in one uh, episode so it felt a little bit rushed how they did that also there was a line by kelly who, who said trust is earned uh, that's a direct quote by Worf in that same episode of tng so i think i covered everything i wanted to say so that's my review of this episode my biggest complaint is that it feels like just a ripoff of the tng episode the wounded and deep space nine episode past prolong and some elements from other uh, episodes such as uh, suddenly human and probably a few others that i might have missed now as i said many times i'm fine with remaking the same ideas i don't think uh, you can be a hundred percent original i think it's impossible nowadays to come up with a story which was never done before elsewhere however i think it's very obvious exactly where they're ripping off all these ideas it's very very obvious they do kind of shake things up they do kind of mix it around a little bit so that it wouldn't be as noticeable but i still notice it and that means it is too similar and as someone who watched uh, all the Star Trek shows multiple times, it simply damages my enjoyment from this show and it feels like uh, I'm uh, re-watching the other Star Trek shows which I know by heart and so I'm kind of rolling my eyes and so it's not a good thing. I want to see a little bit more originality, a little more imagination, I want to see new stories which I didn't see before or if you use the same idea then at least make it better, do it better than it was done before. And I just don't feel it's better. I feel it's worse. I feel that TNG had uh, much better scenes dealing with some of these topics much more seriously with some dramatic scenes in which you could see the emotions in the actors. You could see actors uh, being in tears basically. So that was much more dramatic. And here it feels like a cheap imitation of that. So I'm sorry, this is my honest opinion. And if you didn't see the other Star Trek episodes I mentioned, I do recommend you check them out as well. And then you can decide for yourself which one of them you prefer. If you like this episode, and you didn't see any of them maybe you would enjoy those episodes much more because i think some of them were better so am i giving up on the orville no i still think it's a good show i still hope it gets better i hope it's uh, more original i hope it starts to stand on its own feet and not just copy stuff from star trek i want to see more originality more imagination and only then i'll be able to say this is a great show and that's what i want to say i want it to be a good show and more original so that's my hope for the show 
That's my opinion, let me know what you think in the comments below and we can debate it in the comment section and I hope to see you all next time. Bye bye.